What it do, booze? Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, sup? <laughs> my name's Alyssa from Alyssa's World, obviously. I post Sims-related videos here with heavy storylines and a smidgen of humor, but something I constantly struggle with is voicing over builds and create a sim. It's like a curse. <laughs> this is something that I've been trying to decide whether or not I should do because I've never seen anything else like this on YouTube, but after a bit of tossing it around in my head, I decided to go for it. I'm going to start a very few and far between series called Nightmare Diaries where I talk about dreams or nightmares I've had in detail over a speed build. If you enjoy this, like this video to let me know if you want more, or honestly you can dislike it if you really don't like this style. Um, as long as I, I know kind of what you're thinking on this, because like it's really kind of far out for me. So I suffer from what you might call extremely vivid dreams, meaning they're very detailed. It also means I can usually remember most of the dream when I wake up. This might be cool for normal silly dreams, but it's the exact opposite for my nightmares. Recently, whenever I've been waking up from super vivid dreams, especially nightmares, I immediately, and half asleep, document them in my Google Docs, and now that I have a handful of these documents, I thought to myself, why don't I make videos on these? The first video is the last entry in my Google Docs, but it isn't the most recent. I actually had this nightmare when I was 17 or 18 years old, but it's been as fresh in my memory now as it has been since the day I woke up from it, so it continues to be one of the most intense dreams I've ever had. That's why I decided to talk about it first before the others, so here we go. <laughs> A little background on this, I was raised Catholic due to my mom being a child herself when she had me and my grandparents having such a huge hand in raising me while she went to school. We went to church every Sunday, prayed before every meal, the whole nine yards. It wasn't until I went to live with my other grandpa when I was 15 that I began questioning everything about this religion. This is the grandpa whose house was also haunted, and these spirits that I could feel so heavily all the time just raised more questions. Why aren't they in heaven or hell? Why are they seemingly bound to a house for eternity if there's a god waiting for most people with open arms? Anyway, there was a good week or so living in that house where I felt like a really bad presence was trying to get a hold of me. Now, don't tell anyone, but I did play with a Ouija board in my room, one that I made myself out of cardboard, mind you, and it was a piece of crap that my grandpa later found and burned, and I never told him that I made it too. He, I just was always kind of like, yeah, that's really weird. I don't know how that ended up in this house, and I never, I never came clean to the day he died. I never, never told him it was me who made it. And I only did it because I felt like something was trying to communicate with me. And if you're wondering, nothing contacted me via Ouija. <laughs> After that, I felt nothing but darkness around me, though. My Catholic grandmother's godparent had been a priest since, like, the 60s. He was definitely Jesus' ride or die. <laughs> I'm only saying this because it comes into the story later. One night, though, I had one of the most vivid and terrifying dreams I've probably ever had, or at least in the top five. I dreamed that I walked into a huge overbearing church. It was like a castle. The walls went up so high it could touch heaven, and the windows went as high as the walls themselves. The most horrifying thing about these stained glass windows was the fact that people were pressing their faces against the glass from the outside, with their hands around their morphed faces so that they could see better. And I mean really morphed, like they almost looked distorted. They were calling for me to come outside. Calling my name, but subtly. It was like a unison whisper. Alyssa, 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 Alyssa. They covered the glass from top to bottom as if they were flying or toppled over each other. It blocked all of the light coming inside the church. I sat down in a pew and saw the priest ahead of me. He looked familiar, but I couldn't put my finger on who it was. He sat next to me and handed me a holy book and he told me, put it away, Alyssa. I placed it in the box on the pew in front of me, where books were supposed to go when you're finished reading from them. It ended up back in his hands, though. No, put it away, Alyssa, he said again, louder like I wasn't hearing what he was saying. I placed it in the box again, confused. It ended up in his hands once again. You're not hearing me right. Put it away. Put it away! He was yelling at me now. The people pressed on the stained glass were calling my name even louder. Alyssa! 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 
It felt like heaven and hell were fighting for my soul, and I'm, I'm not saying that lightly. I remember yelling back, I don't know what you mean! I keep putting it away and it's not working! The look on the priest's face had disappointment written all over it, and it was just then that I understood that the people outside, calling my name, weren't people at all. They were demons, trying to come for my soul, which was only protected because they couldn't step into the church. I woke up in absolute tears. It was only probably less than a week later when I learned about my great uncle Paul, the priest in my family who had died right before I had that dream. Like seriously, a few days before I had that dream. I'm still not Christian or Catholic. I don't go to church and I don't participate in religion. But I do believe in angels and demons, good and evil. One thing I do know for certain is that this dream was either a huge coincidence or a ghost speaking to me in the only way he knew how because he knew, or thought, that my soul was in trouble. I haven't told my family completely everything about this dream. I'm kind of scared what they'd say knowing that I played with a Ouija board in my already haunted house. But um, that is the most vivid dream that I can remember from literally six years ago. It's crazy that none of these details have withered from my mind, honestly. But that's why I'm convinced that this dream is just different from most others that I've had. After all of these years, it's burned into my memory like an old piece of coal still perfectly formed. I contacted my religious grandmother after writing this today, asking if I ever told her about the dream I had. I sent her a snippet of the draft, and I'll show her response above. I asked her this too, but I kind of wonder what you guys have for an answer to this question. Um, I already have experience with deceased loved ones communicating in my dreams, but do you think that they morph the whole setting of the dream, or do you think that they choose to pop up in dreams that you're already having? Or do you just, or do you just kind of think this whole scenario is complete rubbish and you don't believe in it at all? Which I totally respect. We all have our own beliefs, which is why I think that topics like symbolism, dreams, and religion are so interesting. With that though, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Remember, if you think that I should keep this tiny little series going on my channel, give this a like, and if you want to become one of my boos, go ahead and subscribe. Only if you want. No pressure or anything. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you did all enjoy this first installment of The Nightmare Diaries, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, loves!